good morning students i hope that you watched the previous lectures video in the magnetic materials magnetism and magnetic material chapter 5 so this session what we are uh, going to discuss means the continuation of the topic in the previous class we discussed up to the comparison between electrostatics and the as yes, a magnetostatics so we discussed nearly 12 comparison points now we are going to discuss the another topic which one is called uh, yes earth magnetism so earth is magnetism we know that yes earth is considered to be a huge bar magnet earth is considered to be what children huge bar magnet so let us consider is yes, uh, yes, assume that earth is a uniform solid sphere Yes, uh, this will be the yes, geographic north-south axis. So, geographic north and geographic south. So, this is the axis of the geographic north and south. Yes. Then what is the magnetic axis means? You just see that earth is assumed as to be a yes, uh, imaginary bar magnet inside the earth. Yes, earth is yes, magnetic behavior. This will be yes, SG and this will be yes, NG. Yes. So, yes, uh, this will be M. So, magnetic north and this will be magnetic south. SM means magnetic south and NM means magnetic north. We know the properties of uh, magnetic field lines. So, we know that it is always uh, conver yes, coming out from the yes, north pole of the magnet and it is going into the south pole of the magnet. So, the field lines of that will be looks like this. Yes, when you are yes, looking from that, yes, inside the yes, surface of the, or inside the earth surface, okay. Now, please see that, yes, uh, there are uh, certain planes, a plane, vertical plane passing through the, or a plane which is parallel to the, yes, geographic axis, that planes are called, yes, geographic meridian. So, that is, geographic, yes, uh, geographic meridian so what is geographic meridian means a plane which is passing through the yes, rotational axis of the earth similarly that is called yes, simply i call it as a geographic meridian gm and similarly uh, a plane passing through the yes, magnetic axis a plane passing through the earth magnetic axis that is called as yes, magnetic meridian that is called what children magnetic S yes, meridian so that is simply i call it as m magnetic meridian as yes, so once again the plane passing an imaginary plane passing through the axis of the as yes, rotation of the earth is called a geographic meridian that means along north south geographic north south and a plane passing through the magnetic meridian is generally called as yes, magnetic axis through the mag imaginary plane passing through the as yes, magnetic axis of the earth that is called what children magnetic meridian yes these are the two basic definitions we must know and there are certain uh, yes elements that means a uh, parameters needed to explain the earth magnetic property that is generally called as uh, yes, elements of as yes, uh, elements of earth magnetism element of what children earth magnetism yes so three parameters are there so one is called uh, is uh, angle of declination or declination angle declination angle is yes, in different books they are using different representation but i am using here as d and next one is a dip angle angle of dip or dip angle or angle of inclination so inclination angle inclination angle that is uh, in ncrt they may use i here i am using that has to be delta the another one, the third parameter what we have to discuss or uh, we have to know that is horizontal component of, horizontal is a component of, horizontal component of earth magnetic field, component of earth magnetic field, earth magnetic field, we can say that that is BH, that is what children, BH, okay. So now please see that we are going to define one by one. The first one what we are going to discuss is angle of yes, declination or declination angle. The first one is we are going to define what is uh, D. Yes. Now please see that yes, uh, 
let us assume that this is the yes, a plane passing through the rotation axis of the earth that is called a geographic meridian. This is what children geographic meridian say for example GM S. Yes. Now there is another plane, there is another plane which is uh, yes, make some angle with the yes, geographic meridian. This, this plane is called yes, magnetic meridian. This plane is called what children magnetic meridian. So the angle between this uh, geographic meridian and the magnetic meridian is generally called what children angle of declination D. It will change uh, yes, uh, with respect to different position on the earth surface. Now the second one what we are going to discuss is uh, dip angle. What children? Dip angle. We know that. So dip angle. We know that whenever a bar magnet is uh, suspended freely then it always aligned in the direction of geographic north south approximately. So let us assume that yes, uh, this is a magnetic needle. Yes, uh, a sharp magnetic needle. You may yes, uh, see that one in uh, yes, uh, physics lab. So now we please see that say this will be north and south. Now the, whenever uh, any non-magnetic material is suspended freely from its uh, geometric center, it is always horizontal and uh, in all directions. It can turn any direction but it is exactly horizontal. But in the case of magnetic needle, when it is suspended freely, the first thing is it always aligned in the direction of Yes, geographic north south and moreover it will not be exactly horizontal it may be yes, uh, either a tilt upward or downward as yes, it depends upon the where it is placed either as yes, towards the yes, north pole or south pole of the yes, earth magnetic axis okay now this angle this angle made by is yes, this magnetic needle with this uh, horizontal this horizontal the, yes, the angle made by magnetic needle and the horizontal, this angle is called generally what children? Delta. That means angle of dip or dip angle. Now how to understand this one from this diagram means, let us consider this is your yes, a total earth magnetic field, uh, yes, B vector, total earth magnetic field D vector. Okay. So now we please see that, now please see that. This is a line, an imaginary line. The angle made by S, yes, this earth total magnetic field with this horizontal line. So this horizontal line represents this one. So this is the horizontal line. This is the horizontal line as we shown here. So the angle between this horizontal line and the magnetic needle. Because this magnetic needle will be aligned in the direction of earth magnetic field only. So therefore, the angle between this imaginary horizontal line and the yes, magnet, yes, magnetic field, earth magnetic field is generally called what children? Yes, delta. Yes, the delta represents angle of dip. Okay. Now, this vector B is resolved as a component. One is along this line and another one is along this line. And this is your vertical component. BV is equal to yes, B sine delta. You know the component form of vectors. And this will be what children? Along this direction what will be there? Yes, BH will be there. This BH is nothing but yes, B cos delta. B cos what children? Delta. So this is called horizontal component and this is called what children? Yes, vertical component. So this total earth magnetic field B vector can be written as its magnitude and directions are given. That has to be B is equal to root over S. Yes, b h square plus b v square we know that uh, how to find the magnitude of the vector s in component form and the direction that is nothing but tan delta that is what children b vertical divided by b horizontal b vertical divided by what children b horizontal so generally <coughs> yes uh, this uh, is a plane as yes, uh, the, the horizontal component the horizontal component is generally is approximately along the geographic north south direction okay so the, uh, the another point is the b gauge direction is because the declination angle is very less yes so that uh, we can approximate that the magnetic axis and the yes rotation axis are very closer with each other therefore i can say that the b gauge direction is approximately along geographic as yes, north south direction approximately yes 
and another one second point and the second point is the delta will be is yes, different at a different position say for example at the poles at the poles the delta will be 90 degree so that uh, yes, uh, that at the poles the magnetic needle will be exactly vertical with respect to horizontal direction whereas at the equators at the equators the delta value will be what children zero the delta value what children zero so these are the very important relations because uh, in the EMI lesson, electromagnetic induction lesson, these concepts are very, very important. And how, where, in what direction the BH will be there, BV will be there, and what are its delta value in different position. This information is not only used here, this may be used in next chapter also. Please uh, make a, as a careful note on this. Okay. So this is the is, uh, information about earth magnetic is, uh, field. Okay. Yes. And the another third topic is the another topic what we are going to discuss is here is some basic terminology. Now the second part of the lesson we are going to discuss that is magnetic materials. So magnetic what children? Yes, materials. In this magnetic material topic we can learn the following things. The first one what we are going to discuss is called basic definitions. Basic what children? definitions what are the basic definitions we can use means the first one is yes intensity of magnetization or simply magnetic intensity i vector so intensity of intensity is of magnetization intensity of what children magnetization i it's simply called i vector some books they may use a m so i can use here as i Therefore, I can write that this I is defined as magnetic dipole moment or simply we call it as magnetic moment per unit volume of the specimen. Unit volume of the what children? Specimen or, or we know that yes, I is equal to yes, magnetic moment is nothing but pole strength into yes, its separation like uh, Q into 2D in electrostatics divided by the volume can be volume of the specimen uh, what we used is area into length area into what children length therefore uh, we can say that i is equal to s m by area that is pole strength by area either magnetic dipole moment per unit volume or pole strength per unit area this is the definition for what children intensity of magnetization yes and uh, the another uh, unit is as we know that magnetic moment is nothing but ampere meter square and this will be meter cube so that will get cancelled out then the unit is what children ampere meter the unit is what children ampere meter so this is the first uh, basic uh, terminology what we must know and the second one is is yes, uh, the second one is is uh, magnetic intensity or magnetic field intensity magnetic magnetic field intensity so what is this magnetic field intensity yes h vector or h vector h okay magnetic field intensity or intensity simply we can call this intensity of a magnetic field okay so in this we can see that yes uh, it is different as in two category we can write that suppose h is equal to b by mu h is equal to what children b by mu in the case of medium that means just to take a, 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 a small ferromagnetic material which is placed in the external magnetic field then what will happen means due to the external magnetic field the atomic or molecular magnetic moments in the specimen are aligned in a particular direction now all the yes, magnetic moments are in the same direction there is a non-zero magnetic moment net, net to magnetic moment will be non-zero so because of that we can say as yes, the material is become as a magnetic material now that magnetic material can produce its own magnetic field so that's why is yes, h is equal to b by s yes, mu when or i can write this is bm also that means the magnetic field in the medium magnetic field in the what children medium that is h is equal to bm by mu or another one is h is equal to 
B naught by A so mu naught. Suppose if it is in air or vacuum, if the specimen is placed in a what should then air or vacuum, that case H can be written as B naught by A so mu naught. Okay, children. Yes, this is the second definition. And the unit is uh, as we said the same as to be as magnetic as yes uh, intensity of magnetization as very similar to that ampere meter. Okay, the third parameter what we are going to discuss is yes uh, the magnetic susceptibility. So the magnetic magnetic is yes, susceptibility yes it's a yes, chi m. Okay, yes. Now please see that in this case what you have to do sir means chi is defined as is i by h the ratio of intensity of magnetization and the magnetic field intensity is nothing but i by h since they are having same unit so it has no unit it has what children no unit. The fourth parameter is is the fourth term what we must know is yeah. Yes, uh, that one is a total magnetic field. Total is yes, magnetic field in the specimen. Total magnetic field in the what children? Specimen that is B net or simply that is called B medium. B material medium that is equal to S yes, B naught. That means the applied field. We can simply say that that is what children? This is the total magnetic field or magnetic field in the medium material medium and this is the upright magnetic field or S the another one plus B material. So what is this uh, we can say that BI that is induced magnetic field that is what children induced magnetic field ok. Now how to understand this ones are means you just take a, a ferromagnetic material there is a current carrying solenoid yes. Now the current carrying solenoid will produce a uniform magnetic field along its axis, along its what children axis. So that is the field produced by the solenoid is considered as to be a applied as magnetic field, applied what children magnetic field. And the another one is B induced that means now in the S solenoid axis and now I am keeping some yes, specimen material yes. Now, this material we know that in the previous chapter we discussed every revolving electron will act as a magnetic dipole. So this material or specimen con contains a large number of uh, yes, atomic or molecular magnetic moments. When they are placed in this external magnetic field what will happen means all the yes, uh, magnetic dipoles are aligned in the specified direction, specified direction. So because of that what will happen means is yes, the net magnetic dipole moment will be as yes, a constant or non-zero and they are aligned in the direction of applied field. So that is called as yes, so because of that alignment in the as yes, molecular magnetic as yes, moments in the specimen now this material will produce or behaves like a magnet and this material will produce some magnetic its own magnetic field that is called what children induced as yes, a magnetic field or we can say that this is B naught is very similar to that is mu naught H plus B I is nothing but mu naught I is induced that I means here intensity of magnetization. So this B M is nothing but what children is yes, a mu H this is what students mu H and this is the expression for is yes, the total magnetic field in the specimen total magnetic field in the what children specimen ok. The another is yes, the fifth definition or fifth parameter what we are going to discuss is permeability yes from this equation we can say that as yes, mu means what so mu is equal to as yes, bm divided by h permeability of the medium so we can say this is what children permeability of the as yes, medium permeability of the medium. So similarly if it is placed in air or vacuum then we can say that S yes, mu naught S yes, mu naught is equal to B naught divided by H permeability in S yes, vacuum or air. So permeability in air or vacuum. So this value we are already given in Bayard Savatla. So mu naught is equal to 4 pi into 10 to the power of minus 7 Henry per meter. The unit of this one is Henry per meter and this value are already given as yes, this value is already given 
4 pi into 10 to the power of minus 7 watts you run entry per meter yes so similarly the another one the ratio of this will gives what is relative permeability that means yes uh, mu r that is nothing but mu divided by mu naught relative permeability what children relative permeability for air medium it should be one uh, for a, as other medium that value will be differ depends on the uh, types of the magnetic material what we are using yes so these are the yes basic definitions we must know that the another one is there yes you just see so here i can write that for the completion of the discussion now the fifth one and the sixth one the relation so relation between magnetic susceptibility and the yes relative permeability the relation okay so this relation we are going to derive yes this is a one we must know that yes so now you please see that this equation is yes, the total magnetic field equation just to take this i can write that this mu can be written as from this equation we can say that is yes, we can say that mu is equal to mu not mu r so from this i can say that mu is equal to what children mu not is yes, mu r is yes, okay now please see that and this has to be taken and will be written here therefore i can write that is uh, mu not mu r h that is equal to this equation only yes please see that as yes, i can be written as from this i can be written as chi into h i can be written as what children chi into h therefore mu not h is there as it is plus this chi mu not i can be written as is yes, uh, chi into h therefore mu not this susceptibility term into h so mu not h is uh, common on either side gets cancelled out that means uh, mu not h mu not h mu not h is common so gets cancelled out then i can get that is mu r that is equal to what children 1 plus chi so this is the is uh, what is that called uh, relation between mag relative is uh, permeability and the magnetic susceptibility of the material yes so this is the information about the basic terminology used in as yes, magnetic materials yes you please kindly as yes, note on the theory part students yes Another one, the sixth is relation or the thing what we must know is, is the another one, the last one, magnetizing current. What children is magnetizing is magnetizing current. What is this magnetizing current? Uh, I, sometimes it is called IM. So please uh, take care of the symbol, uh, whether it is capital I or small i, that is our wish. Is magnetizing current okay yes how to understand these concepts or means let us assume that there is a solenoid yes which carries some current i say this carries some current what children i and we are placing some uh, yes uh, yeah, magnetic material uh, yes a ferromagnetic material or anything we know that in the previous chapter we said that magnetic field due to the solenoid is b r that is equal to mu naught n i suppose the core is uh, any other material medium then b medium can be written as mu r times of b r mu r times of what children b r that means whenever some uh, yes, uh, air core that means this is the axis of the solenoid and if only air medium is there that is called air core the solenoid Whenever some material, yes, magnetic material is inserted in the axis of the solenoid, then the total magnetic field will be increases. That means when, when compared to air core the solenoid, 
the material medium is present inside the axis, then there will be a increase in its magnetic field value. Yes. So during that condition, the current through the solenoid is taken as to be I. Yes. Now consider the situation. The second one is now this yes, a core of the yes, solenoid is removed. Core of the solenoid is what children removed. So therefore, yes. Now we please see that only this contains only air core to solenoid. So this produces a magnetic field, and I can say that the, this magnetic field as B1, the corresponding current passing through the system is I1. This is the total magnetic field produced by the system. Now, since the yes, core of the material is removed, that means now the solenoid system make has to be uh, made as to be air core to solenoid. Because of that, what happened? Whenever as yes, a core material is removed, the value of the magnetic field produced by the solenoid gets uh, decreases. So in order to say that has to be B2. Now the magnetic field produced by the system has to be what children? B2. Now what I am going to do, I want to do something with the circuit such that the field produced by the solenoid when the core is present, that is B1, should be same as to be as a field produced by the air core to solenoid. Yes. So therefore, I want to make, uh, we want to make that B1 should be same as to be B2. But at this case, B2 is lesser when compared to B1. Now, what I have to do that to in, to change the condition is yes, B1 is lesser than B2 because air, air is present. Now, what is the air core is there. Okay. Now, what I have to do such that I have to make B1 should be equal to B2. Yes, the current passing through this thing is say this is I2. This I2 is nothing but the only option what I am going to discuss uh, or what I am going to do here without changing the number of turns is I can increase the, the supply current. Okay. So, this is the new current is yes, passing through the solenoid such that this magnetic field becomes to be equal. The magnetic field produced by the air core to solenoid is same as to be as uh, the material as a is present in the solenoid. So for this, what I am doing, I am sending some I2 amount of current. This I2 amount of current is nothing but I1 plus some as yes, uh, additional current. I1 plus some what children? Additional current delta I. Say for example, we are sending here 5 ampere. So in order to get B1, initially this is B1 less than B2. Now I want to make this has to be B1 is equal to B2 for so that the current in the solenoid is increased as yes, from for example 5 ampere to 5 ampere to some other say for example 10 ampere like that. Now the additional current what we supplied is a yes, 10 ampere. So for example you just consider I1 has to be 5 ampere. And now the additional current uh, what I sent I2 is equal to is yes, uh, that is a 5 plus some additional current what I am sending. So that additional current say for example uh, some 7 ampere like that. Then I2 is equal to what children? So therefore now I2 is equal to say for example 14 ampere. I2 equal to what children? 14 ampere. That means the current when the air core to mag when the magnetic field produced by the air core to solenoid is same as to be material coat as a solenoid field that is B1 is equal to B2 under this condition for example I have taken I2 is equal to what children 14 ampere for understanding purpose this 14 ampere can be written as this 14 can can be written as for example 5 plus yes, yes 9 ampere 5 plus 9 ampere that is nothing but this 5 ampere is nothing but I1 value therefore I2 is equal to I1 plus this is the additional current as we said here that is delta I that is what children delta I this additional current needed to make air core to solenoid magnetic field is same as to be material core is a solenoid field this additional current is called what children magnetizing current this additional current is called what children magnetizing current so magnetizing is current yes so this is the thing uh, yes uh, what we must know so these are the basic terminology used in the yes uh, yes uh, magnetic uh, as uh, material property before going to discuss this one we must know now please see that yes 
is how the magnetic properties originated in the materials. So that can be given by a concept of as a theory called a domain theory. Yes. What this domains theory or domain theory, which will yes qualitatively explain explain the the origin of the magnetic property of the any material. What it says now we consider any specimen yes. In any material, each atoms or molecules can behaves like a, a small magnet. That is, each atoms or molecules behaves like a, is a, is a magnetic dipoles, a small magnets. But in different region, as they will is aligned in different directions. That magnetic or molecular magnetic moments or atomic magnetic moments are aligned in the different directions different uh, directions will run yes so yes now please see that yes random direction but in a particular region all the dipoles are aligned in a particular direction so this is a, yes, a domain one two three four like that then they are having as yes, within this particular domain all the magnetic dipoles are aligned in a specified direction but overall they may is yes, aligned in different direction when compared to the yes, different domains so because of that, even though there is a non-zero magnetic moment in each domain, the total value of the is the total magnetic moment of the specimen becomes to is a zero because of the random direction. Yes. This is very similar to our polar and non-polar molecular substances in the electrostatics. Yes. So now please see that this is when B external has to be zero. The external magnetic field is zero. This is the case. Due to the random direction, the net magnetic moment will be zero. So m net vector will be what, children? Zero. Yes, net magnetic moment will be zero. Now suppose we are applying some uh, magnetic field. We are applying some what, children? Magnetic field. Say for example, uh, some uh, yes, external magnetic field is applied as shown in figure. Now what will happen means due to the presence of this uh, yes, uh, external magnetic field. Now all the magnetic is yes, atomic or molecular magnets in a each domain will align in the direction of the yes, applied field or uh, depends on the nature of the material that may be either aligned parallel to the applied field or yes, opposite to the applied field. We will discuss that but uh, time being but you whenever the external field is applied obviously there will be alignment in particular direction say for example here is yes, uh, they are uh, Yes, aligned all the dipoles are aligned in the same direction. Yes. Now due to this uh, orderness, okay. So what will happen means the net magnetic moment will be non-zero value. M net is what children? Non-zero. M net is what children? Non-zero. So this is the yes, uh, effect when the external magnetic field is present. Either this magnetic atomic or as yes, a molecular magnetic dipole moments may aligned in the same direction of the applied field. For example, in the case of para and ferromagnetic material, or they may align in opposite direction in the case of diamagnetic material. But anyway, this is the brief uh, qualitative uh, as a conceptual explanation about the concept of as a domain theory, which will explain how the magnetic properties are originated in the materials or the specimen what we used. Yes, this is the is information about the domain theory. Now next what I am going to discuss is the types of magnetic material. The types of what children? Magnetic materials. Okay. So there are three type of uh, magnetic material for up to our level but uh, there is a four or five categories are there. So yes, but we will discuss only three is magnetic materials. One is called diamagnetic and another one is called is a paramagnetic and the third one is what children is a ferromagnetic materials. That ferromagnetic materials and another one is a ferrimagnetic material but that is sorry that is not within our syllabus. So we will re restrict our focus here itself okay. So generally the characteristics of the material depends on certain parameter what we defend just now. So first one, this is called magnetic suggestibility, yes, chi m, yes. So similarly here also it can be, yes, this value will be there. Depends on this value, some material may have a higher chi value, suggestibility value, some may have the lesser value. So depends on that, we can classify this one. 
in the case of diamagnetic material this may lies between is minus 1 to 0 that means uh, minus 1 to between minus 1 to 0 in the case of paramag as a paramagnetic material it is a positive value between 0 to some as a sum as a positive number positive constant some positive number that may be as a 0 0.1 0 0.8 uh, something like that some number positive number okay but in ferromagnetic material it is very large in general very large in general yes just now we studied that the relation between relative permeability and the yes, uh, magnetic susceptibility is what children one so you just add one with this if you add one what will get zero you will get therefore zero is lesser than or is mu r is less than you just add one with this so you can get that has to be one so similarly here just add one one is chi is just add one one plus e some positive number yes okay some positive number e may be as yes, 0 0.1 0 0.7 0 0.3 something like that and here obviously for a ferromagnetic material is yes, mu r will be very very greater than one yes so we know that again we know that we said that s yes, mu is equal to mu naught s yes, mu r since in this case mu r is less than one mu r is less than one therefore we can say that s yes, mu is less than mu naught the permeability of the medium is lesser than the the permeability in free space 4 pi into 10 to the power of minus 700 per meter but in this case mu is slightly greater than mu naught since it is a positive value okay sorry so here it should be mu r it should be what children mu r so is slightly positive number yes the next two here it will be very very greater than is is this one because mu r is very large mu r is what children very large so this is the information about uh, yes that the main concept on what basis the material is classified this one is very important thing but the another one a special type of material is there yes uh, that is called a superconducting behavior that we generally call it a, yes a meissner effect meissner's uh, yes meissner's effect what is this meissner's effect you just know the concept since it is related to diamagnet what it says means whenever the superconductor you know that when the temperature of the material decreases their resistance value also will be decreases at a particular temperature the resistance or resistivity value becomes zero now at that condition we can send the current without any as energy loss without any energy loss such type of material is called a superconductor so whenever the superconducting material is placed in the external magnetic field the superconductor is will behave as a perfect diamagnetic material so what Meissner's effect says that whenever a superconductor, superconducting material is placed in the yes, external magnetic field, so this is some yes, superconducting material, super yes, conducting material, conductor, superconducting material, superconductor. Whenever the superconductor is placed in the external magnetic field, the magnetic field lines are excluded away from it the magnetic field lines are what children included away from this that means no magnetic yes, field lines are not permitted to passing through the material as yes, such type of effect that this effect in the superconducting material is called what children Meissner's effect so this is not needed but since it is very related to the diamagnetic material we are saying this so in the superconductor Will, uh, is one of the example for a perfect uh, diamagnetic substance yes so this is the uh, conceptual explanation on what basis the materials are classified the magnetic materials are classified because by studying this property only we can select the suitable as yes, materials to construct the electromagnets or is uh, a permanent magnets in as yes, uh, different uh, purposes yes please uh, note down the theory students
is the is the properties of magnetic material there are a certain list of properties comparison table will be there that we can discuss in the successive slides so now please uh, see that first one okay uh, what is diamagnetic material you please try to understand children in the case of diamagnetic material is in the case of diamagnetic material the net magnetic moment will be zero m net vector will be what children zero yes because just as we discussed just now we discussed that according to the concept of domain yes even though the molecular magnetic moments are same in a particular domains the total value will be zero because of their random orientation so in the as yes, a diamagnetic material net magnetic moment will be zero but in the case of paramagnetic material m net is not equal to zero but it is very less well less in value but in the case of ferromagnet yes that will be very high non zero value and also more yes so this is the yes that is the first point says so the diamagnetic substances the diamagnetic substances are those substances which are feebly repelled by the magnet repulsion means why the such type of repulsion is the takes place means because of this reason where as we said some material when the external field is applied some material the domains all the domains magnetic moments in the domains may is uh, aligned either along the applied field or opposite to the applied field if any material whose molecular or atomic magnetic dipole moments are opposite to the applied field then that materials are belongs to what children diamagnetic material that's why they said it is feebly as yes, repelled by it that means the applied field and the induced field will be opposite directions the examples are given antimony bismuth copper gold silver quartz mercury alcohol water hydrogen air argon etc now please see the second one so now now the paramagnetic material yes the substance of those who are which are feebly attracted by the ma magnetic material since their m net value will be yes yes less so this m net is less yes in, in these things what i said is in the absence of magnetic field suppose some external magnetic field suppose the external magnetic field is applied external magnetic field is applied what will happen means is yes, the net magnetic dipole moments will very very less but they are aligned in a applied field direction that's why they are telling that is yes, they are feebly weakly attracted in as yes, the materials are given that has to be aluminum chromium alkali and alkaline earth metals platinum oxygen etc the next ferromagnetic substance are those substances which are strongly attracted by a is yes, is yes, magnetic field or magnets iron cobalt nickel gadolinium as yes, and other substances and second one is exam point of view the second property is very important uh, actually in this diagram please don't put uh, n and s in the material yes so it is uh, that should be a small correction so for example in the case of diamagnetic material this is the material specimen or material diamagnetic material so don't use s yes and n here yes it is not a magnet okay now this is placed in the external magnetic field as we said in the meissner effect the magnetic field lines are excluded from the yes magnetic material that means this external magnetic field lines are not passing through the specimen so whenever a diamagnetic material is placed in the external magnetic field then what will happen sir means the magnetic applied magnetic fields are excluded away from the yes material such type of material is called what children diamagnetic material so please don't put n and s here since in slide it is shows n and s but uh, it should not come there that's why i drawn here but in the case of uh, yes you just see that in the case of uh, ferro as yes, a paramagnetic material the number of lines passing through the specimens are very less but it is allowed to passing through the material that's why it is called para so weakly as yes, uh, attracted by the yes, external field and the third one you just see that the ferromagnetic material will strongly attract the magnetic field lines where the large number of field lines can passing through the material this is the second property in examination point of view this diagram as yes, 
diagram based one this diagram based concept is very important even for mcq point of view also please go to the next slide so now please see that the another property when the, this is the first first one is this one is a diamagnetic as a as a and a para and ferro to show the color difference uh, are there to distinguish them when the when it is placed in the non uniform electric sorry magnetic field then they are moving from as a, as a stronger region to weaker region that means opposite to the applied magnetic field but in the case of yes in the case of paramagnetic they are going from weaker to stronger region and feebly attracted it is going from weaker to stronger but uh, as a strongly attraction now we see that uh, third property when the diamagnetic rod material rod is suspended in the external pole pieces of the s yes, bar magnet that means in the external mag s yes, magnetic field this s uh, yes, uh, diamagnetic bar always aligned perpendicular to the magnetic field so this is the s yes, uh, applied magnetic field means this will be aligned exactly perpendicular to the s yes, this is the diamagnetic material which will s uh, yes, exactly align perpendicular to the magnetic field but in the case of you just see that in the case of as yes, a para and ferro they may align in the direction of s yes, what shall run applied field yes please go to the next one so now the same as yes, explanation this is the material as yes, a solid material we have taken but in this slide they are giving uh, taken as to be as yes, a liquid materials or the as yes, a solutions okay Uh, which are that s yes, whenever they are placed you just see that the first diagram the pole pieces are very closer that means the field is very strong the field is what children very strong so when the field is very strong you just see that these peaks represents the as yes, the maximum values are as yes, moving away from this okay you just see that here also the pole pieces are very closed and here also they are very close that means the applied field will be very strong but in the second diagram shows what when the applied when the pole pieces are separated then the applied field value will be decreases that means that well that uh, liquid material will be moving as yes, uh, away from that okay is yes, the next one yes when the diamagnetic substance is placed in the external magnetic field as yes, it is weakly magnetized in the opposite direction these things we already discussed and the sixth point you just see that the magnetic induced dipole moment will be as yes, negative and small as i said these are the values when the external field is not present but when the external field is present what will happen means they are aligned since they are the molecular magnetic dipole moments are aligned opposite to the applied field because of that reason the net value will be opposite means negative so and the value will be very less but in the case of uh, as yes, you just see that as a ferro para and ferromagnetic materials that values are as a small positive and larger positive similarly i value also is there and the next one is permeability value these values are just now we as listed as a small table as as you can understand from there and please go to the next slide so now please see that the magnetic suggestibility actually the symbol will be is what the so far used that one please use it that is chi m is for diamagnetic material it will be negative for diamagnetic material it is what will run negative and uh, independent of temperature this is important thing so independent of independent of what will run temperature independent of what will run temperature that is the main difference between is uh, diamagnet and the other materials but in the case of as yes, a uh, para and uh, ferromagnetic materials the chi value depends on as yes, a uh, temperature so that uh, the relation between as yes, as uh, yes, uh, the temperature and the magnetic suggestibility of the specimen in para and uh, ferro is given by a law is known as to be curie's law so for uh, para magnetic material the curie's law says that as yes, as yes, the magnetic suggestibility is inversely proportional to temperature magnetic suggestibility is inversely proportional to what should run temperature that is chi is inversely proportional to t temperature or we can say that chi is equal to c by t yes so what c is called curie constant where c is called what should run 
Curie constant. So this is the Curie's law. Curie's law for is paramagnetic material. Curie's law. So when you draw the graph for this, we can uh, see that when you draw the graph for this, the graph will be a yes a rectangular hyperbola. So T in Kelvin and this is in S chi and there will be positive and S smaller value. So it will be changes like this. But in the case of S ferromagnetic material, in the case of what children? Ferromagnetic material, the same kind of variation will be there but there should be a small correction there. So for S ferromagnetic material, S there is a correction as yes, for ferromagnetic material is yes, that is a Curie Weiss law. So Curie Weiss law. Okay. So what this says means the same is yes, a concept only. So whereas there is a slight as yes, correction in the T minus T C. That means there is a temperature difference where T C called critical temperature or we can say Curie temperature. Yes. So this is when T is greater than TC. That means uh, for, for a ferromagnetic substance, for a ferromagnetic substance, when the temperature increases, obviously we know that the molecular disorderness also will be increases. Due to that, the net magnetic moment value will be decreases. So when the yes, temperature of the ferromagnetic material increases to a certain value, that certain value is called Curie temperature here. So when the yes, a ferromagnetic material temperature of the ferromagnetic specimen is increases to a particular temperature, yes, as the temperature increases, the yes, a magnetic property or magnetic susceptibility will get decreases. So at a particular temperature, yes, the ferromagnetic material is become becomes to paramagnetic material. That particular temperature is called Curie temperature or we can say critical temperature also. So yes, for this case we can draw the graph between temperature and the yes, yes magnetic susceptibility. When T is equal to Tc 1 by 0 infinity. So that's why they put a dotted line here. This temperature T is equal to Tc. So when temperature is less than Tc then the material is perfectly yes, a ferromagnet. When T is equal to Tc, there is a transition position from the ferro to paramagnet. When the temperature, applied temperature is greater than as a Tc, that will, the material will become a paramagnet. We know that the paramagnetic material is a chi variation with respect to what children as temperature is. So this is the explanation about yes, the properties of, yes, uh, what is that called? Uh, Yes, magnetic material students. Yes, yes. So please remove the slide. Okay. So the next one, the continuation of this discussion is yes. Uh, now we can discuss that one is yes. Hysteresis loop. What children? Hysteresis loop. Okay. What is this hysteresis loop or curve? Yes. As we discussed in the 11th, as in the video lecture where we discussed properties of solid, uh, there also we said, yes, whenever the stress strain graph we explain. Similarly, here also, if let us consider this is the is, uh, applied magnetic field, this is called a magnetic field intensity H and in positive value, and this direction is reversed means that will be minus H, okay. S yes. due to this applied as yes, a magnetic uh, magnetizing field is yes, whenever the specimen just now we discussed a yes, solenoid is there and inside that you are keeping some as yes, a magnetic material in order to magnetize it. So when the current direction is in a particular direction the H value is considered to be positive when current direction is reversed then H value will be gets reversed that may be a negative value. So let us consider a specimen. So, which is placed in the as the solenoid, axis of the solenoid. Now, the current is increased in a particular direction. When current increases, we know that for example, in the case of a solenoid, yes, we can say that yes, B is equal to yes, mu naught Ni. B by mu naught is nothing but H that is equal to S. Yes. So, we can say that H is proportional to what children? I. So, when the current, this will be current. Yes, this is current. 
So now you please see that when current increases, H value also will be increases. When current direction reversed, H direction also gets reversed. So when now please see that, yes, so this is the solenoid and is sending some current I and you are keeping some magnetic specimen, a specimen material. When the current is increases, the molecular magnetic dipole moments are strongly aligned in a particular direction. So let us consider this is BM, that is the total magnetic field in the specimen, as a total magnetic field in the specimen. What will happen means when H increases, the graph also increases to a maximum value. So this is called a plus H maximum, plus H maximum, HM, okay, yes. Now please see that when the yes, field is it reaches the maximum value, beyond that there is no further increase in the induced magnetic field is in the specimen material okay now the field gets decreases so what we expect is the field may decreases in the same path but that experiment shows that the curve is not changing from this point to here in the same way that will be there's a decreases as shown here so now please see that yes okay now it is changed like this that means during the magnetization process this is the path followed by the as material but during the demagnetization when the magnetizing field value will be decreases but in the positive value the graph is not following the same path it is following the some other path okay so when h becomes to zero the value of magnetic field in the specimen is not equal to zero there will be a non-zero magnetic field non-zero what shall the magnetic field say this is op and this will be q this non-zero magnetic field in the graph that is the value of oq this non-zero magnetic field in the specimen when the external applied field will be zero that is called retentivity that is called what children retentivity or we can say that residual magnetic field residual residual what children magnetic field residual as yes, magnetic field yes this is the as yes, definition for as yes, as yes, residual magnetic field or retentivity now further i am increasing the h value but in opposite direction by reversing the current the graph will be as yes, it decreases further and reaches a particular point for the particular value of S, yes, a negative value of the S yes, magnetizing field, what will happen? The residual magnetic field in the specimen becomes to zero. Say for example, this has to be as yes, a PQ and this has to be R. Now the OR is called coercivity. The OR, that means the value of negative value of the magnetizing field that is called what children? As yes, a coercivity that is called what children coercivity that is called coercivity yes so now further you decrease the as a graph uh, as a, you increase the magnetizing field in opposite direction the graph is further increases the graph is what children further increases and reaches some negative maximum so this is minus h maximum again you go with a negative maximum to toward the positive value Again, the graph will not followed by the same path. It will go in this manner. Yes. So this is the what children? Yes. The pattern followed by the yes. Uh, the cycle of uh, magnetization and uh, demagnetization. Yes. Up to this region, what we did? Yes, we did magnetization. But in this part, we did demagnetization by reversing the magnetizing field direction. Then this, when H is zero then this non-zero magnetic field in the material is called retentivity. In order to make this retentivity a value has to be zero, the value of negative magnetizing field is called coercivity. Okay, students. The another, this graph is called hysteresis loop or hysteresis cycle. The another important thing what we can learn from this one is, or what information we can get is, it's very similar to our hysteresis curve in yes, uh, properties of solid. Yes, so here what it says, the area, area of yes, a hysteresis loop, that means BH graph or curve, 
Yes, is directly proportional to energy loss. Is directly proportional to what children? Energy loss. So, yes, energy loss. Energy loss. Because we are, we are sending some current and because of that, Yes, some electrical energy is converted into magnetic, magnetostatic energy and due to that energy conversion what will happen? Some amount of energy will be lost in the specimen in the form of heat due to the alignment and uh, is, uh, orientation and uh, is reorientation of the molecular magnets. Because of that we know that U is equal to S minus MB cos theta. Yes, uh, Whenever the molecule, that molecular magnetic dipoles are aligned or opposite to the field and this much amount of energy gets lost or appeared in the form of heat in the specimen. So from this hysteresis loop what information we can get means with the area of the hysteresis curve is directly proportional to energy loss. If you want to select the suitable material for the making of uh, yes, uh, permanent magnets or as a temporary temporary magnets we have to select the suitable material for the making of a good magnetic materials the area of the hysteresis curve should be very less that means the energy loss should be less during the cycle of magnetization and demagnetization okay students so this is the information about is yes uh, the hysteresis loop and another one is uh, the property of the material in order to make or design a two kind of magnets one is called a permanent magnet permanent magnet and another one is the temporary or electromagnets temporary or what children electromagnetic materials yes so what is the property means here in the case of permanent magnet all the values like retentivity, coercivity and uh, as a relative permeability all are as very large. So in the case of permanent magnets mu r should be very large as a coercivity. So coercivity, coercivity as a say for example this negative field is called HEC. HEC means a coercivity value. So we can say for example the coercivity value has to be HEC in negative. Yes, that should be yes, very large. Coercivity will be large or coercivity is yes, coercivity value will be large and retentivity also BR the residual magnetic field in the specimen. So BR is also very high that means retentivity should be more retentivity yes, should be high. So this is the property of the material uh, should be selected uh, for the designing of permanent magnets. But in the case of electromagnet is yes, except this mu r should be greater than what is yes, very large yes. But the remaining two properties coercivity and the retentivity value will be very less because once the electric current is switched off the material is quickly gets demagnetized. So because of that the coercivity value will be very less and the retentivity value also very less in the, yes, the material which one should be selected for electro making the electromagnetic material. Yes. So I hope that this is the complete theoretical information about is, uh, uh, what is the children is uh, magnetic property of uh, is uh, or we can simply say that magnetism and matter yes. So I hope that you please continuously watch my videos as uh, to give the is clear theoretical understanding. I can give uh, only the strictly the exam point of view. I am not going beyond that even though it should be good for uh, learning the or uh, knowing the yes, uh, additional subject points. But in examination point of view we must uh, focus on a particular thing what we needed for the exam purpose. So please watch my videos regularly and give your feedback. Uh, yeah, that feedbacks will be makes me to get yes, uh, uh, to upgrade myself. Yes, yes uh, this is the complete information about the chapter 5 magnetism and matter and that will be discussed as a two part of videos as yes, students. So the next class we will discuss the another important chapter is more weighted chapter electromagnetic induction that is the chapter 6 as per the NCRT book. Yes, thank you students.